today I'm going to be doing a short video showing you how to swap out the stock subwoofer in your 2016 and newer Honda Civic. Now this applies to any Civic that comes with the factory subwoofer and what we're going to do is that the stock subwoofer which is an 8 inch shallow mount unit will be replaced with the Rockford Fosgate 8 inch shallow mount equivalent which should give us better and deeper bass response using the stock amplifier. In later videos, I intend to actually install a line out converter as well as a powered amplifier to give that new subwoofer that extra punch. But in the meantime, I'll show you at least how to swap it out in my 27, uh, 2017 Honda Civic Type R. So to start, we're gonna go and clear out our trunk uh, because we need to remove this trim piece right here and then we're gonna have to undo a screw which will then expose a sub and then undo three bolts and one nut and then disconnect the wiring harness. We have to take out the foam piece inside the trunk which holds pretty much nothing other than the air pump on the Type R. And by the way, this procedure is exactly the same if you have a Civic Sport hatch. It's just that you have a spare tire. We have to take off this top trim piece here and there's no screws or anything holding it together. In fact, it is just a bunch of pop clips. I think there's one, two, three, four. And how you're gonna do this is you're gonna grab the bottom and just lift up to take it out like this. Remove, in this case, my cargo cover out of the slot here. There is a little plastic cover where that hatch sliding cover was. We're just gonna take a flat bladed screwdriver and carefully pry this cover open to expose that screw. Just carefully pull that out. And then using a Phillips screwdriver, undo the screw. Now once that screw's been removed, you're gonna take your hand and go underneath the carpet liner up along the seal. You can feel the little plastic clips and you're just gonna tug at them to release it. Now, if you're struggling with getting this piece out, you can always use a trim panel tool and kind of peel back and just take a look underneath inside there. You can see it and just carefully pry away so as not to break anything. And it just all kind of comes out like so. You can even flip the seat forward a little bit so you don't get caught up on the back of the seat. And then just... Now once you've separated the panel cover, you're gonna have to disconnect the light by pushing this tab down. You don't wanna pull too hard because you can damage this. And that exposes a subwoofer. Disconnect the sub connector right here by pressing down on that tab. On the sub, you'll have one, two, three 10 millimeter bolts, and then there's gonna be a nut tucked in right here um, that you'll have to use a deep socket to get at. Do this. Nut back there. You just carefully lift the sub enclosure out of the car. Now to remove the sub from the factory enclosure, we actually have to undo not only the screws on the front, right here, we also have to go and undo the little securing screw on the back. And start unscrewing each screw. And then once all the screws are removed, kind of press back down the foam tape just to put it back in shape. Lift your sub out and you can see that there's some lug connectors right here that you just simply unplug. Red being positive, black being negative. Okay guys, so this is what the two subs look like side by side. This one of course being the Honda one. Um, the Honda one isn't the worst of designs that I've seen. It at least uses a decent, you know, fairly fat uh, rubber surround um, and the driver or the cone is made out of a uh, paper composite mix. Um, you know, stamped basket, two nominal impedance, 
it doesn't weigh too much. And in terms of height, it's actually taller than the sub that we're going to be replacing it with. So when we look at the Rockford sub, it weighs quite a bit more. On the back, you can see that the construction is a lot better. It looks like it's a uh, composite basket. It's not stamped steel like the factory one. The magnet on the back is substantially larger. It's got a big cooling port for the voice coil. Now, as far as weights are concerned, the factory sub weighs in at one point, just under 1.7 kilograms. Okay, so 1684 grams. And for those in our America, three pounds and 11 half ounces. The Rockford sub, it is 3,291 grams, so basically double the weight of the stock sub. Again, for our US friends, it's seven pounds, four and one eighth of an ounce, so quite a bit heavier. Okay guys, so before we proceed, I'm going to prepare the subwoofer enclosure. Now we've got these nice spade connectors from the factory, which sadly I'm just gonna have to cut off um, because, well, they're not useful anymore. It won't fit the new sub. So then I cut those off and then I'm going to strip the ends off such that I can attach some bullet style connectors onto the ends. And the reason why I want to use bullet connectors is that later on when I want to add an amp I don't have to cut wires again. I can just simply unplug them Okay guys, so before we reinstall this sub into our enclosure, we actually need to properly wire up this dual 4 ohm voice coil sub so that the car's head unit sees it as a 2 ohm load. Now, in order for to do that, we need to actually wire these two voice coils in here, sandwiched inside, in parallel, not series. Because if you do it in series, then you're actually, if you follow Ohm's law, you're actually not going to get a 2 ohm impedance. So on each side of the connectors, we have a positive negative and we have a positive negative. Basically, what's going to happen is that I'm going to take my 14 gauge wire, wire it into the positive of one coil, bring it around, and then and then put it into the positive of the other terminal. I'm going to do the same for the negative, connecting black to black black to black okay like this so here's a close-up black and red one side go to black and red on the other side and that's wiring it in parallel make sure your connections are seated and you stripped enough insulation off the wire ends so that it's nice and neat and then we're going to add a little pigtail to our speaker, putting another black wire into one of the black terminals, like this, one hand's width length. Cut that. Then do the same for your red. And then just making the length equal. strip off an end to add a bullet connector. Now one thing to remember guys is that on the sub enclosure side my positive is a female connector so therefore on the sub this has got to be a surprise surprise male connector. Give that a solid crimp. Give that a solid crimp. Okay guys so just to confirm that we've done our work properly and wire the sub to be a 2 ohm load, take our voltmeter and set it to the ohm scale and we can touch the pigtail ends of our sub. And it shows up as 1.7 ohms and there's going to be a little bit of variance because speakers have a nominal impedance, it's not necessarily fixed. Um, so 1.7 is close enough to 2 
And we can confirm that by testing our stock sub. As you can see, it's 2.1 ohms. So we've got it correct. We want to also prep the housing um, for our sub because some people would say or would argue that you want to seal the enclosure as tight as possible and they usually silicone this little mounting hole. Now I don't want to do that. I'm going to use a really good quality tape like Gorilla Tape to seal it on both the back and the front. And the reason is, is that one day when I decide to add an amplifier to my car for the sub specifically, I can use these bullet connectors, disconnect it from the sub direct wiring, tap into a speaker wire that goes out this hole and out the back here to the line in on my amplifier or my audio control LC2i and then run the actual amplified power to the sub back again through another set of wires through this little hole to the sub. And so that means I don't have to drill any new holes and I can make use of what is here already. Now Gorilla Tape is pretty decent, works well. So I'm just gonna cut a square and seal the hole. Do the same for the rear. And stick it on. We can now take the sub, plug it in to our bullet connectors firmly making sure that black is to black, red is to red, and then dropping it in. The great thing is you can reuse all the factory screws in the factory mounting locations. You don't want to over tighten these screws Finger tight is all that's needed, really. We can go ahead and drop the sub back into its factory location. Like so. And just reinstall our screws. Again, tightening them just hand tight. Now, before we close things up, just make sure you plug in your sub connector here. And just take a damp cloth and just give the sub a wipe to clean up the dust just for my aesthetic sake. So that's what it looks like, guys. All right? You can see it sits perfectly in there. It's not loose at all. It's nice and clean. So now we can go ahead and line up these clips here and these little pop rivets back into the holes in the body, um, making sure that you also remember to connect this light up. Install the screw, the cover, install our trunk lip panel by lining up these bottom pieces here down to the grooves in the bottom of the trunk and just gently pushing down to snap things in place. And then peeling back the rubber gasket. And then just pulling on the front here, make sure that it's actually hooked in, engaged properly. Replace the foam trunk filler. And replace the trunk tray. back. No loose pieces. And that's all there is to it. So as you guys can see, swapping out the stock subwoofer in your 2016 or newer Honda Civic is neither difficult nor time consuming and in my opinion for the $105 US dollar cost um, to buy the Rockford uh, dual voice coil sub is well worth the money. Using the stock head unit, I would say that the sub is definitely deeper, um, it's definitely more powerful, but I'm not going to say that it's earth shattering. 
you really need to add an aftermarket power amplifier as well as a uh, line out sort of bass correction unit such as an audio control LC2i to really get um, the performance out of the Rockford sub. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're looking for just a minor improvement and don't want to spend too much money doing it, um, swap the sub out. You can see that it only took me about maybe 20 to 25 minutes. Um, obviously longer because I did a video showing you guys how to take things apart, but man, it was a joke to swap. So if you guys like my video, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment if you have any questions, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.